thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Sarah, and I grew up here in Albuquerque. I grew up in the South Valley. I've always been a creative person, and I went to UNM and really liked printmaking. And since then, I've worked with kids and youth and adults in Albuquerque and different organizations, teaching different art mediums. And um, I also worked at a screen printing company where we printed on fabric and which was, yeah, we made like towels and aprons and just things that you could use in your house. So um, this project today is gonna be for third grade plus. If you are younger than third grade, you could probably still do it, but with the assistance of an adult or a guardian or an older sibling or someone in your house. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to print on fabric using condiments that you have in your refrigerator. Um, you can use things like mustard and ketchup, red chili. You can print on things like t-shirts that you have that are old, um, pillowcases or fabric that you wanna make something out of. This is what I made and um, you'll be making something of your own, um, using your own design and whatever fabric you have. As you can see, it's a little bit light. Um, I used mustard for this and it's a stain. It's not super dark, um, but it does show up and it's really cool. So I'm gonna go over the materials. Remember that you can pause and rewind if you need to. The materials that you should collect are four sheets of paper, uh, two writing utensils, one for each end. You can use a marker and a colored pencil, a pen and a pencil, um, whatever you have. They can be the same, they can be different. Um, you're gonna collect a condiment from your refrigerator. I'm gonna use mustard today, but you can also use ketchup or red chili. You can use grape juice, Kool-Aid, Jamaica. Um, those are a little bit more liquidy, um, so they'll be a little bit different to work with, but they stain your clothing, um, so they'll work. Um, you'll also need newspaper or a tarp or tablecloth to cover your workspace. Um, what we're working with does stain your clothing and other things, so we just want to be careful and cover everything that we can. Um, collect one to three pieces of fabric. Um, the fabric should be light colored and smooth. Um, you don't want to use like a bath towel. It has a, a texture on it and it's not going to print well, um, but you can use an old sheet that you cut up. You can use an old t-shirt that has stains on it, maybe something old that you don't wear anymore. Um, you can use a pillowcase and you can print on the pillowcase and still use it as a pillowcase. Um, so we're just looking for smooth fabric. It's light colored, um, doesn't have too many patterns on it. And um, they should be about the size of a piece of paper. So about eight and a half by 11 or larger. Um, you'll also need a little container for your condiment. Um, just to pour it into and we'll be working from that today, kind of like a palette. You'll need a pair of scissors, a rag or a paper towel just to clean up. You'll need an apron, a work shirt, um, or something to cover up your clothing because um, it does stain clothing. So we just want to cover our bodies and um, make it so we don't stain it. <laughs> um, we also want to have access to a kitchen sink or somewhere where we can clean up after ourselves um, and a trash can nearby. I like to just throw things away as I work so that there's no opportunity for, tr for mess and staining things. Um, you can have some tape if you want. It's not necessary, but it can help. Um, we will be painting with our fingers today. I'm gonna paint with my finger, um, but you can also use a latex glove to cover your hand, especially if you're working with chili. Sometimes we don't wash our hands very well and we touch our eye later and it burns. So um, just be really careful if you're working with chili. Um, so you can use a latex glove um, or you can use a paintbrush um, or even like something like a Q-tip or something because um, sometimes people don't want to get dirty and that's fine. Um, so go ahead and collect your materials and um, come back when you have them together. Cool, so we've gathered all of our materials and now we're gonna set up our workspace. So, if you have newspaper, you're gonna do what I'm doing. Um, if you have a tablecloth or a tarp, you're gonna lay it just on your table. Um, 
I like to lay the newspaper just basically as far as my elbows and as far as I'm going to reach. Um, and we're going to overlap it here so that there's no chance of anything getting through to the table. That's pretty good. Um, got my trash can right here. It's pretty close. Make sure you have a trash can nearby, uh, preferably with a bag or a lining in it. Um, go ahead and put on your apron or your work shirt so that we're all ready to go. Um, and if you have if you have really long hair, you can tie it back or just put it behind your shoulders. You can pull up sleeves, take off any dangling jewelry that you might have on or long necklaces, um, just so that they don't get into what we're working in. Cool. So, first thing you're gonna pull out is your two writing utensils. I have a pen and a Sharpie and one piece of paper right in front of you. Um, so we're going to do a quick warm up and I'm going to open these up. We're going to have one utensil in each hand. So many of us have a dominant hand. Um, so it's sometimes kind of weird to do anything with the other hand. Um, today we're going to use both hands. Um, and we're just going to do a symmetrical design on this paper. Um, when you're making it, I'd, I'd like you to breathe. Um, and just notice how it feels to make different shapes. Um, sometimes we feel more drawn to zigzags. Sometimes we feel more drawn to like curvy lines. Um, whatever feels good to you, we're just gonna start drawing. So you're gonna put both of your writing utensils in the middle of the page and you're gonna go pretty slow and you're going to try to do the same thing. So coming out from the middle of your paper, you notice that um, the paper kind of wants to move if you go fast. Um, so we're just going to go really slow here and it's going to be pretty different, but that's okay. You're going to try to do the same thing with each hand. Um, sometimes my pen doesn't work very well. Sometimes rotating it around works. But um, just add to your design. Um, I would recommend not lifting your pen or your markers um, until you finish like an element of your design. So um, I feel like that's pretty cool. And I'm going to lift my pencils and then I'm going to keep going and you're just going to keep on going until you fill up the whole page. Um, so keep it symmetrical. And we'll do this for a couple minutes. And symmetry is when a design is the same on both sides in some way. So it can be from a, an axis point in the middle and radiate outwards. Maybe it's the same all the way around. Maybe it's just the same on two sides. So when we look at our face, like our face is um, symmetrical. I have an eye and eye, nostril, nostril, right? Another thing is that it can be balanced. It doesn't have to be like super symmetrical, but maybe it's balanced in some way. Um, so when you look at a design, maybe there's one part um, and they're different, but um, they're balanced in some way. And sometimes that's an intuitive thing. You just kind of know, um, know it when you see it. So another thing that we're thinking about while doing this is um, the negative space. So the negative space is the space in between each line. Um, and so we're looking at the shapes that we're making in between the lines that we make. Um, and remember that this is just, um, this is an expression of who you are and there's no pressure here. You're not doing anything wrong or right. Um, it's just um, a warm up is a way to kind of get our minds to connect with our hands because that's what we'll be working with today.
Okay. So, this is my warm up. Um, yours probably looks pretty different. Um, so, we can put that aside. Um, one thing you might just notice is what kind of shapes you felt drawn to, what kind of shapes you made mostly, and um, how that felt working with your both hands instead of just one hand. Um, cool. So, now we'll move on to the project. You should have three sheets of paper now. Um, I'm going to get our paper and your scissors. Right now we're going to be creating our stencils. So for your first sheet of paper, um, fold it in half any way you want to. And then you're going to fold it in half again. Then you're going to fold it the other way in half. And then in half again. So depending on what kind of paper you're using, it might be a little thick and hard to cut through. If it is hard for you to cut through it, um, just unfold it once and try cutting that way. Um, so we have this little paper. Um, when we're cutting our stencils, we don't want to cut off an entire edge. We want to keep at least one section on each edge intact. And that just makes it so that it stays together totally. Um, so when we're cutting, um, you might find that you can't make like super tight lines like you could when you're drawing. So just let the, the tool guide you. So we're using scissors today. So just see what you can do. Um, and think about the shapes that you were drawn to. If you're drawn to like circles and stuff, maybe you could start with some circles and see what that looks like. Um, so go ahead and start cutting into your, your folded paper. And when we're cutting, you can see that <laughs> these are flying off. Um, let's try to make a neat pile of these because we're gonna collect them later and use them in our final design. Sometimes they have like cool shapes um, that we can use. Um, I also find that cutting a lot of material out tends to look cooler, but cut, and then sometimes it's hard to cut all the way through. So just look as you're working, just look on both sides, and um, it doesn't have to be super perfect, so it's okay if it's a little rough. Also notice that I'm not cutting all the way across because um, when we unfold this, yeah, we want it to be just one piece. Cool, so this is what I did. Um, you can see that I have at least one um, section on each edge that's still intact. Um, so now we're gonna unfold this carefully because sometimes it, it is a little bit fragile. Um, and as we fold, we can just Press our edges open um, where we folded. Cool. So that's my first stencil. Okay, we're gonna put that aside. Um, our next stencil, we're gonna fold it differently. So we're gonna do three different stencils and each of them are gonna be folded differently and we're just gonna see what happens. Um, so yeah, this is these are some of the shapes that I saved. This kind of looks like a fishtail or something, so um, I might use that in my final design. Um, so just keep those little scraps in a little pile here. Um, so we're gonna fold this again. First, we're gonna fold it in half. So when you're folding, you can line up the edges and then hold it with one hand and crease it with your fingertip over here like that. Um, so fold your paper in half either way um, and then unfold it. And then we're going to take this edge and we're going to fold it to that center line. So to the center. And then we're going to fold it back. So we're folding this kind of like a fan, like a back and forth. So we're going to fold it back on that center line. And then we fold it 
just so that um, that edge comes to the, the center line also. So it should look like this. You should have about, well, you should have four segments. <laughs> and then you're going to do it the other way. So fold it in half. Then unfold it. Fold your edge to that center line. And you want to make sure that you press all your creases here, just so that it stays together as you're cutting. Um, fold it back, and then back again, kind of like a fan. So now it's going this way too. It should look like a W or an M. So now this is what we're going to cut. Um, again, keep one um, part of each edge intact. You can repeat the same shapes if you want, just to see how that changes um, in the folds. And remember to breathe and just enjoy the process. So after you've cut your stencil, remember to make a neat pile of your scraps just to keep them together. Make sure your newspaper, <laughs> your tarp stays there. Um, and then again, unfold your design. I ended up making a similar shape as I did last time, so we'll see how they're different. It's interesting because it kind of looks like eyeballs, um, which I was not intentional. Originally, um, I thought it would, yeah, it was like a little plant. Um, another thing you can do when you unfold these and um, you want to add a little something else to it, um, you can fold it back up and just add more to it if you want. And you can do that with your first stencil as well. So those two stencils, we have one more stencil that we're going to work on. Um, and you may be familiar with this one. I'm just going to make a, this is how you would make a snowflake. So you get your third sheet of paper here. And we're going to fold this short edge to the long edge. So you can go this way or that way. You're going to line up the edges and make a nice crease. Um, and I, one way to do this is you, you look at this corner here and just make sure that that stays like a corner, just like that. Um, line it up here, we crease, and then you can see we have a, a triangle here. So we're gonna cut off this bottom portion. Just right along the edge of the paper that you folded. Cool. And we need this so um, we can throw it away in our trash can that's right here. Okay, so we have a triangle. Now we're going to fold it in half. It's also good while you're folding things to put it down on the surface. Um, that way you have something hard to press onto. Um, and then we're going to fold it in half again. So we're just making smaller triangles. Um, so here we go. Now I'm going to cut into this one. Same thing, we don't want to cut off an entire edge, we want to keep at least one part intact. Um, and you can try something new, you can do the same thing. Um, it's your design, so see what happens. Stencil is, it can be made from a lot of things. You can make it out of metal, cardboard, paper, and other things, but basically it has holes in it, and then you place that on what you're printing on, so you place it on the fabric, and then we put um, ink or paint on those holes, and that's what gets printed. Okay, so here is my cutout. I'm going to unfold it, and just careful to... Um, To make it flat as you go, you can put it down and 
going to smooth it and fold it the opposite way. Um, yeah, that's my design. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I don't really like this, um, that space there. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a minute to figure out how to fold it again. this. Um, you can also think about the edges if you want to add anything extra to the edges. Just So this is your third stencil. This is mine and you have your own. Um, cool. So I'm gonna put these here and put your scissors aside. Um, now you're just gonna look through these um, pieces here and see if there's anything interesting that you wanna keep. Um, I like a lot of these little shapes. They look like fishtails. and triangles. Cool. So keep anything that you want to keep to use for your design and um, I'm going to throw the rest away. Just so we have some room to work here. Okay, so now you're going to pull out your designs and you're going to choose your favorite one. Um, so for this, you can look at the symmetry too. You know, we folded our paper and we unfolded it, which means that a bunch of the shapes kind of repeated themselves across. And then also as you unfold it, um, it looks a little bit different than how you cut it out. Um, so my favorite design is this one that ended up looking like eyeballs. Um, so I'm gonna print that one. Um, so your other designs, we can fold up and put aside. You can save them for later, or you can um, work on them more. Um, so those are over there. All right, cool. So that's my favorite. Now I have a t-shirt. So now's the point where you're gonna get out your fabric. And um, I've printed on this one before, and so now I'm gonna print on the other side. And if you have something that's double-sided like this, like a t-shirt um, or a pillowcase or something, you can put some, some newspaper inside of it. And the reason we're gonna do that is, is, um, Sometimes the condiment that we're using, the ink or whatever, will go through. And so we just want to protect the other side. So if you just have a single piece of fabric, you can just lay it down right onto your tarp or your newspaper. And we're going to put it inside. And we also want it to be flat. So you can kind of pull the seams, stick your hand inside, and just position the newspaper or cardboard, whatever you have, so that it's relatively flat and make sure your newspaper stays where you want it. Um, so I want my workspace to be flat. So this is gonna be my workspace. That's nice, it's right in front of me. I have my stencil here. So once you lay out your fabric, uh, remember that you can pause at any moment, but um, this is my stencil that I liked, and um, I'm now going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, I'm gonna cut it actually right down the middle. So you can look at your design, and you can use the whole thing for sure if you want to. Um, it's gonna take a little bit more time to do that, which is fine, but this is your design, and so you get to choose what you do. So I'm going to lay out my stencil and then I have these cool little cutout things. Um, and I'm just going to arrange them on here the way I want them. And 
And feel free to cut them in half if you want or alter them. Cool. So I'm, I'm happy with this. This is, um, I put it right in the middle because um, I want there to be space around my design. Um, I made it a little bit smaller um, than it was originally. Um, but I like it and it's also symmetrical. Um, right here, so if you were to cut it in half, it's the same. If you were to cut it, if you were to fold it this way, it's the same. Um, and all together I have three little, they look like insects or eyeballs or something. Cool. So now um, I'm going to get our other materials. I have a little container here. You're going to need um, a couple tablespoons of your condiment. I'm using mustard today, but you can use chili or ketchup, anything that stains. And I like to put this sort of towards the top. Um, if it was down here, sometimes I might you might spill it on your shirt um, and you could knock it off the table. So I think up here is good. I'm also going to put my paper towel or rag up here. And this is just for wiping. Um, wiping my finger if I need to, or wiping anything away um, if anything spills. <clears throat> At this point, you can also get out your paintbrush if you'd rather use a paintbrush um, instead of your finger. Um, you can put on your glove, especially if you're using chili, just to protect your skin from chili, it burns. Um, and you might ask for help from an adult at this point, but we're gonna first um, stir up or shake your condiment. Make sure it's open. Um, sometimes the ingredients settle and you, you end up squirting out just liquid instead of the full thing. Um, so go ahead and pour out a um, couple tablespoons. And then close it. You can put it aside. I'm going to pull this a little bit closer. Cool. So when we're working with a stencil, um, we're not so much going to paint and smear it around because we're working on paper and um, to get the full effect of the design, you want to kind of press down. Um, it's also so that we don't tear our paper so much. Um, so once you have your design where you want it, I like to work in small sections and um, hold my stencil down with one hand um, and print with the other. Um, you can also, at this point, you can put like tape. You can take the back of your stencil, press it down, or put tape around it. Um, but basically, you want it to stay as still as possible. So, I'm going to get a little bit of mustard on my finger. Not, not too much. Um, and you're just going to dab it into the holes of your stencil. And if you get a lot on there, um, just spread it around. And for my hand, I'm going to tap more. Um, So you can see that my hands are working together, like as, as I paint, I hold down the stencil wherever I'm working. And I'm lifting my elbows too, so that I'm not like shifting the shirt or anything. And you're just going to keep on doing this until you fill up your whole design. Um, when you come around the edges, it's kind of your choice. I'm going to lift up for a minute. Um, like these little pieces here, I'm going to hold and kind of just... Um, go around them. Um, but how you treat the edges um, is kind of up to you. Um, cool. Okay. So just keep going.
Okay, so you should have filled in your stencil by now. Um, sometimes you can look and see um, fabric through the condiment that you're using. Um, and you just want to dab it a little bit so that, um, so that all you see is the mustard on top. You don't want to see any fabric coming through, just so that you get a nice even coating of it. Um, you can choose to like fill in certain places here. Um, like I'm going to fill in right here. Um, just to add to my design. Um, awesome. So now what you're going to do um, is wipe off your fingers with your rag or your paper towel. Um, if you made any splashes like I did, um, you can, um, if you smear them, you know, they'll, they'll show up. Um, you can also just leave them there um, and they'll dry and they won't be that noticeable anyways. Um, so, now we're going to peel up our stencil, which I think is the most awesome part. So, peeling up this piece, make sure you have your trash can nearby. You're just going to throw each piece right into the trash can. Um, so, that's awesome. We're going to pull up this one. And that is so cool. I'm going to throw it away. And my final piece up here. Cool. Make sure you wipe off your fingers. Okay, so if you feel like you made any mistakes on your design, maybe you could work with them. You know, if it like smeared a little bit, um, mine, mine smeared through a little bit and it's still really cool. Um, so sometimes we think we messed up and actually it's, it's just still really cool. But if you feel like you need to add some things to your design at this point, you can still. So let's review our steps. First, we gather our materials. Then we covered our workspace and put on an apron. Then we cut out some stencils. Um, and then we picked our favorite stencil and we set it on the fabric. So we created a design on the fabric using our stencils. Um, then we applied our condiment through the stencil onto the fabric. Then we removed the stencil um, to unveil an awesome design that you made. Um, and then we set that fabric, that project that we did, we set it aside somewhere safe. Then we cleaned up everything. We put all of our materials away. We threw away the newspaper, cleaned up everything. Um, and we let our project dry overnight. This is important just because, um, the condiment just needs time to really stain the fabric. Um, you could let it sit longer if you want, but overnight is good. Um, the next day, we rinse it in cold water just to get off the extra, if there's extra like mushy chili or mustard or ketchup on it, um, just rinse that off in the sink. And then you wash and dry your fabric like normal. Um, if it's a shirt, you can wear it. Um, if it's fabric, you can make something out of it. Um, and use it, but show off your project because it's awesome, you made it, and it's an expression of who you are. So our next project, I'm going to be teaching you how to fold fabric and then dip it in things like juice or coffee or Kool-Aid. Um, so we'll be using liquids that you have at your house and staining fabric using those. Um, so join us next time. Thank you so much for being here today and making art with us. And we'll see you next time.